I don't mean to be so bold, but you know sometimes when you get to sing the blues, it gets kind of good to you. He gets so damn good to me till I have to preach him. What's going on, everybody? It's Chris, your blues guy. Welcome back to Blues Guy Vinyl. Thanks for uh, tuning in, joining me here. Hope everybody had a great uh, holiday season and a uh, great new year. Mine started off lousy. Uh, I got really sick, actually. I, uh, I was knocked on my ass, if you pardon the expression, for like 10 days, man. Starting around like the 29th or the 30th or so. It was, it was rough. I wasn't sure what I had. I didn't know if it was the, the coof or the, the monkey paw. Monkey pox? What do you call it? The paw. The paw. The 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 I don't know. Regardless. Anyway, I was pretty sick. But enough crying and whinging and whining about me. Because at least I didn't die of meningitis. Like Jeff Beck. Uh, upon filming this, today is January, uh, Friday, January the 13th. Friday the 13th. Ooh. And I just uh, a couple of days ago found out uh, on January the 10th that Jeff Beck passed away, 74 years young, after finishing a tour, after recording a new album with Johnny Depp called 18. Um, he passed away? Meningitis? That's too young. 74 is too young to die of something like that. So, uh,. Yeah, I thought maybe what I would do here is uh, as a little tribute to one of my favorite guitarists, actually, of any genre, is show a little bit of my uh, Jeff Beck collection here and uh, share a little bit with you. And uh, again, I hope everybody's doing well. So uh, without further ado, let's get into this thing here, shall we? First of all, what's playing in the background? It's the Yardbirds. From uh, 1967, I believe, on uh, Capitol Records. So, I'm a huge Jeff Beck fan, and uh, I think he's just um, absolute, absolute, or he was. It's going to be tough getting used to speaking to him in the past tense. But I think he was just an absolute virtuoso on that there git fiddle, and. Uh, his loss is going to be felt for years because not only was he influencing other guitarists back in the 60s, but right up till present day, I mean, he was still a huge influence. And this guy could play any, I mean, he could play, of course, rock, blues, blues rock, uh, jazz fusion. Hell, he'd even play like opera and classical styled stuff on that guitar. And just, he's one of those guys that could make that guitar do things really like, is that a guitar or is that some kind of magical wizardry going on? Like that it's what it's what it's this guy, a Jedi using the force? Like what's a, what's going on here? So, you know, he's definitely surely gonna be missed. Um so yeah, I'm gonna share a little bit of my collection here. I this guy was prolific, man. Just as Jeff Beck is a solo artist, 36 albums, not including the Jeff Beck group and other side projects. Now, with a guy like Jeff Beck, I would love to be a completist, but I'm working on it. So I'm not nearly close to those 36 albums and again, some of these other side projects, but eh, you know, I feel chipping away at it. Dink, 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 slowly but surely, right? So we're gonna start it off with, uh, uh, he's primarily been on Epic EMI the whole time for, throughout his career, pretty much. Uh, especially in the earlier portion of his career. So I'm going to start off with his first sort of solo album, and that's Jeff Beck, Truth. And as mentioned, this is on the uh, Epic label. A beautiful bright yellow label there. And one thing about Jeff Beck, among many things, was, um, unfortunately, I never had the pleasure of meeting Jeff Beck, but a friend of mine, uh, who owns Heritage Posters and Music here in Calgary, a record store that I often go to. His name's Jerry. He had a chance to uh, see Jeff Beck perform live in a smaller venue here in, in Calgary. Uh, this was many, many moons ago. And also uh, a backstage pass to sit and, and meet with Jeff and the members of the band and chit-chat. He said Jeff is just, was just the sweetest guy, very soft-spoken, very sort of un understated kind of a guy. Um, 
which kind of goes in the contrary to the persona that he had on the stage, right? As this guitar slinging rock guitar god, right? So just an incredible, incredible man, and uh, apparently very generous with his time. And again, as mentioned, uh, it's Becola, uh, as mentioned, uh, you know, a huge influence on other guitarists. Uh, this is a, a later reissue on the Epic label. It's a Canadian uh, pressing. Uh, next up is Blow by Blow. And what I, the thing that I love about his guitar playing, and I'm, I'm kind of a, a huge guitar guy, and I'm not really a guitar player myself. I try, but it sounds like somebody's skinning the cat when I try to play the guitar. Um, but I can really appreciate the sort of the dualities in the way that Jeff played guitar. Um, there's these subtle little things that he was able to do with that guitar. Just subtle, subtle, little, barely touching of the strings, barely manipulating the whammy bar or the, um, the, the, the wah-wah pedals, the stomp boxes, to create these very, very almost indistinct distinguishable little subtle nuances to the music to either elevate it up or to kind of cool things down from a more elevated state. Uh, but at the same time, he could just blow the doors off the place with some of his crazy guitar solos, you know, just almost completely unsurpassed. Jeff McGuire, perfect example of that. And um, the other thing that I liked about Jeff Beck is he was just kind of a no-nonsense guy when it came to his music and what he believed he was going to be playing. What, um, you know, what he, what his desire was to play, the, the type of music that he wanted to present to his fans and to the audience. And also his, his ability to sort of branch out. You know, I touched on his sort of jazz fusion uh, dives in the music world, uh, where he sort of skirts the line into other things like classical music and opera and that sort of thing. That was a great example of to see Jeff Beck with the Young Hammer group live. And, you know, it's this duality of these subtleties, but also this crazy in your face guitar playing that just made him a really, really special guy, a really incredible artist, a really special performer, and somebody that's just, in his passing, has just created a huge void, right? So. You know, this was something that was really shocking to me because uh, these days, 74 isn't really, you're not an old man these days, really, if you look after yourself, right? You're not really an old man these days, like 74 was gen generations ago, where you're kind of considered a dotty old man, or, you know, a granddaddy, you know? And uh, by all accounts, he was pretty healthy. Um, very active, obviously, again, to tour and put out the album and was touring supporting that album. And uh, just recently appeared on a Buddy Guy's newest album, um, playing sort of guest guitar on a couple of tracks. And he appeared on a previous Buddy Guy album, the name escapes me, I think it was one of Buddy's sort of mid-2000s albums. So, you know, he's always got projects on the go. He was always working with other musicians and again constantly uh, being a huge influence to other musicians, but not afraid to continue to challenge himself, challenge his abilities and challenge his talent. You know, constantly diving into different genres, exploring different things that he could do with the guitar, constantly trying to expand the, the prism of his, of the sounds that he could get out of these six-stringed instruments, right? So this is uh, Jeff Beck Group, Rough and Ready, outstanding album. Obviously, many of you are very familiar with it. If you're not, all of these are highly recommended. And like I said, I'm, my collection is very, very humble. I'm just scratching the surface here with about 10 or 11 albums that I've got. Um, just Jeff Beck or Jeff Beck Group. Again, not really including some of the Yardbird stuff that I have as well. And I've been kind of meaning to pick up that uh, album 18 with uh, Jeff Beck and John Depp, but actually, since uh, Mr. Beck's passing on the 10th, uh, a couple of my local record stores here uh, sold out of their copies, so unfortunately, not able to get any at the moment, so I'm going to 
keep the old papers peeled. And I've got uh, Jerry looking out for other copies. And if he can get some more, he's going to give me a call so I can swing in and pick up a copy. And, uh, you know, just really shocking, right? When, like if somebody's been ill for a long time and then they pass, it's, I mean, it's still sad and it could still be a little bit of a shock, but it's not quite a jolt to your system as, you know, somebody that apparently was doing fine, was healthy. I mean, he had his problems in the past with drugs and alcohol, but apparently he was clean and kicked all of that and was doing really well. You know, but somebody like, let's say, Johnny Winter, who passed not too long ago as well. I mean, he had been ill for a long time, fighting demons for a long time in his life. Um, the fact that he was an albino as well, they tend not to have such a sort of a longevity in their life. You know, so Johnny Winter was something that, although it was still sad when he passed, he kind of saw the writing on the wall over the years, right? But Jeff Beck was just kind of out of left field. I guess I just recently picked up about not even a month ago, and it's outstanding. Uh, BBA, Jeff Beck, Tim Bogart, and Carmine Apice, or if you're Italian, Carmine Apici. Great, great album as well. And, you know, just incredibly sad. The music world has lost a great, in any genre, just any genre across the board, uh, the music world has lost a great. So I thought what I would do also here is share a little bit. Um, I've just bookmarked a few messages from other musicians, um, it's people in the music world, some of their uh, sort of social media um, statements regarding the passing of Mr. Jeff Beck, uh, some of the stuff from Twitter. Uh, the first one is uh, from Joe Perry, uh, guitarist and uh, backup singer, of course, with the great Errol Smith. And he says that Jeff Beck was the Salvador Dali of guitar. To see him play was to hear the ultimate six-string alchemist create magic in a world of its own. With his passing, the world is a poorer place. Our heartfelt sympathies go out to Sandra, Jeff Beck's uh, wife, I, I presume or assume. We share your sorrow. Another one from the great Mick Jagger lead singer of the greatest rock and roll band of all time, Rolling Stones, of course. He says, with the, death, with the death of Jeff Beck, we have lost a wonderful man and one of the greatest guitar players in the world. We will all miss him so much. Sir Paul, Paul McCartney of that other group from England that are pretty good. Um, he says, Jeff had an immaculate taste in most things. His no-nonsense attitude to the music business was always so refreshing, and I will cherish forever the moments we spent together. Jeff Beck has left the building, and it is a lonelier place without him. God bless Jeff Beck and his family. Uh, and from Jimmy Page, former co-member of the Yardbirds, and there's a bit of a um, discrepancy there between, or there's conflicting stories, I should say, between the history of Jimmy Page, who's actually personally my personal favorite rock guitarist, ahead only of Jeff Beck, for me, is Jimmy Page. That's just my personal opinion. Uh, you can have your own opinion. I'm just really partial to Jimmy Page, followed very, very closely by Jeff Beck. But, uh, you know, there was uh, this thing that, you know, they didn't get along, and they fought all the time, and they were bitter rivals, and that's not the necessarily the truth. They actually were friends. They did have a rivalry and they did have some conflict in that band, but that's just because they were both musical visionaries and both talented guitarists, and they both sort of had a vision for the Yardbirds and wanted to take it in slightly different directions. This caused some conflict, but it didn't kill their friendship at all. They remained friends, and uh, uh, Jimmy Page's tweet here is a test that. He says, the six-stringed warrior is no longer here for us for us to admire the spell he could weave around our mortal emotions. Jeff could channel music from the ethereal. His technique unique, his imaginations apparently limitless. Jeff, I will miss you along with your millions of fans. Jeff Beck, rest in peace. And finally here, from my favorite blues guitarist of all times, Mr. Buddy Guy, I mentioned earlier, he did a couple of songs with Jeff Beck, had Jeff as a guest on a couple of his albums. Mr. Buddy Guy says here of uh, Mr. Beck, the loss of our friend Jeff Beck is crushing. 
All of our love and prayers go out to his family, his friends, and his fans around the world. Until we meet again, Jeff. Love, buddy guy. And Team BG. So there you go, a few tweets shared by music icons in their own right, talking a little bit about the influence that Jeff Beck had upon them in the musical world, and how deep of a friendship over the, you know, the 60 plus years that Jeff was in the music business, uh, he developed along the way with guitarists and other musicians of all walks of life. You know, not to mention, you know, cats like uh, uh, Rod Stewart and Ronnie Wood, who helped Jeff with a lot of his soul stuff, and Jeff helped uh, Rod Stewart with his soul career as well. So, you know, just the outpouring of emotion and grief continues to pay homage to, you know, one of the greatest of all time. Pretty much anybody you talk, you walk up to a complete stranger on the street and say, name me your top five guitarists of all time. Jeff Beck's going to be in the top five of pretty much anybody's list. Anybody who's a lover of, you know, guitar-driven music anyways, whether it's rock, blues, uh, jazz fusion, you name it. In fact, Rolling Stone, I don't really... Hot, holding as high regard as I once used to, but even Rolling Stone back in the day uh, ranked Jeff Beck and their top 100 guitarists of all time. He was ranked number five. And of course, Jeff Beck was inducted. He's a multi Grammy Award winner, and he was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame twice once in the 90s for uh, his work with the Yardbirds, and once in, I think, the mid 2000s for his solo stuff, his Jeff Beck slash Jeff Beck group. So that's pretty incredible accomplishment in its own right. So um, there you go. A little bit of an homage and an ode to the late, great Mr. Jeff Beck, who will be sorely, sorely missed. There's going to be a huge, huge void in the music world for quite a few years to come here, unfortunately. You know, when these guys go and, and they go like that, it's so sudden. It just creates this massive hole that uh, I don't think anybody can ever truly fill. But... Uh, Godspeed to Jeff Beck, and uh, thank God that we have his, his beautiful legacy of music and uh, you know, the, the kaleidoscope of emotions that the music that he created can emote in pretty much anybody who's a fan of music in general. So there you go. Thank you, Jeff Beck. God bless you and Godspeed to you. And uh, thank all of you for uh, thanks to all of you for tuning in and joining me here today. I really appreciate it. Let me know what you think down below. Share your thoughts on Mr. Beck and his unsurpassed greatness in the comments below. Uh, do all the other YouTube stuff, but most importantly, keep digging, keep spinning, take care of yourselves out there. And until the next one, have a good one. All right, cheers.